So may I invite uh, a few very, very prolific human rights defender at this part of this, uh, no, uh, Mr. P. S. Sangma. Sangma sir, would you please join here with us? Mr. P. S. Sangma is the former speaker of Indian Parliament, and he is uh, one of the presidium member of this forum. You know that we have formed this forum. You remember, uh, Sangma sir? South Asian People's Union Against Fundamentalism, Communalism is this forum was, you know, set up in Dhaka at a conference of five South Asian countries. And Sangma Saab is one of the presidium members. He was elected one of the presidium members of that. And now he is leading the Indian delegation. And you may also know his daughter. His daughter is the, and possibly she is the youngest, you know, yeah. minister in the Indian government. And two of his sons are, you know, member of the legislative assemblies in uh, Meghalaya. One is a leader of the opposition. So now we consider him as a kingmaker in India. So may I invite uh, Advocate Mujibur Rahman Khan from Pakistan, our good friend, and Mujibur Rahman, Advocate Mujibur Rahman from Pakistan. And we have our Honorable State Minister for Cultural Affairs, Advocate Pramod Mankin, an old comrade of us, champion of the human rights movement and fighting for the rights of the minorities. Pramod, will you please join us? And we have another uh, friend came from UK, our old friend from Amnesty International, it is Abbas Faiz. Abbas, I would like to join you here, you know. You see the condition of these people uh, in Bangladesh. You might have some first hand knowledge. So please join us here. And uh, maybe we'd like to, I'd like to introduce another, you know, human rights defender who was persecuted for her cause in Iran. She is Ms. Parveen Ardalan, a recipient of uh, Ole Palm Peace Award. And you know that uh, that incident, it has been reported in Bangladeshi newspaper also. She was not allowed to go to, you know, Sweden to receive that award. So she's here to attend the conference starting tomorrow. So may I invite, you know, Parvin to sit here. So uh, who else uh, we could, but our Nepali friends are on the way. So uh, former speaker of Nepali permanent, uh, parliament, uh, Mr. Daman Dungana, is leading the Nepali delegation. And I'd like to invite our old friend from Canada, this attorney William Sloan. When there was a persecution on the religious minorities, just after the last election, election in 2001, Sloan was that brave, courageous, you know, human rights defender, came all the way from Canada just to protect the cause of the minorities here. And we are very fortunate that Sloan is here, and Sloan might share some of his experience, what he have seen last time. So uh, let us start with Pakistan. It is very interesting, and we have some Pakistani friends here also. So let us start uh, with Mujibur Rahman Saab. Uh, let us hear from him what is happening in Pakistan. Then we can watch that small, you know, video clippings. Now this is Advocate Mujibur Rahman from Pakistan. Thank you very much. Uh, Sharia Kabir. It's a pleasure to be the one of the participants of this uh, South Asia People Union against fundamentalism and communalism. I have been to Bangladesh many a times. I, in fact, I hail from Bangladesh, but I am a Pakistani. I have lived all my life in Pakistan. I had my education in Pakistan. I am practicing in Pakistan uh, as a uh, professional lawyer. So maybe many of you know the situation and many of you may not be fully aware of the constitutional uh, background of what is happening in Pakistan. I have said once before and I have said many times that in this subcontinent, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, when this subcontinent was divided at different times in India, Pakistan and Bangladesh, the founding fathers of these three countries envisioned their respective countries as secular countries. In my country, Muhammad Ali Jinnah is well known to have said, in, in due course of time, there will be no Hindu and a Muslim and a Christian. You are free to go to your mosque, to your temple, or wherever you like. So that was the kind of perception. And that speech of Muhammad Ali Jinnah was not a press, not a press statement. It was not an interview. 
it was a policy statement in the first constituent assembly of pakistan so nobody can possibly say that it was a stray thought of mohammad ali and he did not give it due consideration mohammad ali jinnah was a very astute lawyer and he knew what he said and he is known for his very ac uh, acute understanding of things very thorough understanding so when he said that he meant that and there's a long history behind that i will not go into that but that is what he envisioned my country to be but that vision is no longer true shortly after his death we had what we know as objective resolution now this objective resolution was the working of the clerics which have, who had joined the muslim league in muslim league there were certain ulama and there are other ulama who had opposed pakistan but the muslim league ulama though they had supported pakistan the moment pakistan came into being they started struggling for Uh, converting pakistan into a religious state if not a theocratic state in the and that real uh, in that literal, literal sense so by objective resolution which said whereas the sovereignty over the entire universe belongs to god uh, almighty alone and whereas we as the chosen representative of the people are the trustees of that etc 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 now therefore we gave our unto ourselves this constitution that was the preamble at that time we had hindu members from east pakistan as it then was who opposed it and some other members from uh, western pakistan also who were christians or hindus they opposed this they said this is giving a political overtone to our constitution and it should not be done lakat ali khan tried to persuade them and he was at at pains to explain that whatever may happen pakistan is not going to be a theocratic state so for a time maybe people thought that it was only a preamble and that the major the substantive part of the constitution will not be a theocratic kind or religious kind but shortly thereafter now here is where i come in or my community comes in in 1953 the majlis e rr who had opposed pakistan to third nail and the jamaat islami who had opposed pakistan to third nail they joined together and they started anti ahmadiyya riots in punjab now that and anti ahmadiyya riots what was the demand removes of rulla khan because he is an ahmadi the first foreign minister the man who had the caliber of being the judge of the international court and being the chief justice of the international court and who was the president of the 17th session of the general assembly a man of that caliber they wanted him removed because he is an ahmadi a religious issue remove all ahmadis from key posts why because they are ahmadis a religious issue so that kind of but at that time the comrades from mohammad ali jinnah were alive lakat ali was alive and the lakat ali was not alive the others were alive and they knew that this cannot be done so that demand was not met there was a march march law and thereafter there is a document which i always recommend and i will recommend now again each one of you gentlemen if you can lay your hands on the munir inquiry report it it very clearly discuss the issues i i am going very quickly because i know there are other gentlemen i don't want to take time and and i'll finish in a very short time so he pointed out that if these things are not curbed this will happen again so it happened again in 1974 a secular person zulfikar ali bhutto nothing to do with religion a western educated man nothing in his practical life known as a religious man he he used this issue and declared ahmadi is a non muslim in 1974 that that opened a flood gate for fundamentalism then then riaul hak ordinance 18 uh, 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 ordinance 20 and you know what happened in our ordinance 20 i have conducted cases a man was sent to jail for 3 years because he per chance met a gentleman on the road side and that assalamu alaikum he was sent to jail you posed as a muslim a man was arrested in abbottabad because as he switched on his telephone holy quran was being recited from pakistan television and the mullahs made hue and cry here is a qadiani reciting holy quran arrest him and nobody bothered whether he recited quran or not or whether it was coming the from the television he was arrested i had to go from peshawar for from rawalpindi to peshawar to get him bailed out and it, it took me quite a time nobody bothered ahmadis day ahmadis read quran day and night they will not give it up but the point is he was arrested when he was not actually reading i mean there are th thousands of cases like that so ahmadis have been persecuted in pakistan 
I will not take the story for any further. It's a long story. I could talk ad infinitum because I have suffered every inch of it on myself. The latest carnage in Lahore, you know, I have read in newspaper. But what I have to, I would like to read a quotation. About 200 years ago, an American lawyer, when he was defending a blasphemy case, he said, there is a constitution higher than any statute. There is a law higher than any constitution. It is the law of the human conscience. And no man who is a man will defile and pollute his conscience at the bidding, uh, at the bidding of a legislature. So what I have to tell you is that Ahmadis in Pakistan and elsewhere will not pollute their conscience at the bidding of a constitution. They want to live according to their conscience. And they are trying to live according to their conscience and suffering. In Bangladesh, in 1953, when we were having that problem, this, this blessed land, Bangladesh, this holy land I call it Bangladesh, where people are liberal, secular, democratic, more enlightened, they did not join. The only lone, lone voice in the entire of Pakistan was heard from Dhaka and East Pakistan against that agitation. So here, when agitation started in 1992, and thereafter, when Bengalis are, uh, uh, our Bengali Ahmadis are being uh, persecuted, I, I take my hats off, salute to Bangladesh civil society, the way they stood up, one and all, and one of them, my friend, Shariar Kabir, that, may, that makes him so dear to me. He is an irresistible person for me. The moment he says, Mujibur Rahman, I want you, I am there for him, because he was there for me when I called him. So my, my salute to Bangladesh civil society. So Bangladesh is a better place. But what I said, I have, I have contributed a paper for this conference. Maybe you, many people, many of you will have the, uh, the read it when it, it is published. I have said one thing. Pakistan, I don't know, I am not a doctor, but I have used that phrase. Pakistan and Bangladesh are Siamese twins. Their diseases, their maladies, their problems, their difficulties, their handicaps are bound to be same. Bangladesh is going, is already going through that phase because that militancy somehow is being exported to Bangladesh. I don't say who is exporting them, but that militancy is coming to Bangladesh. And I'm happy that Bangladesh is conscious of that. So I wish Bangladesh in order to protect save and uh, 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 go on with the secular pluralism of Bangladesh, which is the life of Bangladesh, which is the blood of Bangladesh. So hats off to Bangladesh and to secular pluralism of Bangladesh, because therein lies our safety in the entire region. Thank you. Thank you. Friends, our Nepali comrades are here. Right now they arrived and I would like to introduce you to Advocate Daman Dhungana, former parliamentarian and uh, speaker of the Nepalese parliament. Please, uh, Daman, can you join us here? I would like to welcome you here. And Mr. Daman Dhungana is also one of the presidium member of South Asian People's Union Against Fundamentalism and Communalism, which we set up in 2001. And Damanda is also a champion of the human rights movement in Nepal. Now he's a human rights lawyer. So can I ask uh, our friends, you know, to so, uh, show that uh, video <laughs> clippings? We'd like to see some, a few minutes of this army, the persecution in Pakistan. It's a video clipping. Pakistan and Lahore, Shankalugu, Ahmadiyya, Shampradar, Duty Moji, the Bondu Ghari, the Hamla, and Nihotovetsa, and Toto, Chapanujon. Mritir Shanka, Aro, Barte Parabule, Ashunka Karahotse. Shukrubar Zuma, Namaj Shoma, E Hamla Chalanohoi. Pride Dui Hunter Hurechole, E Hamla. Lahore, Model Town, Ogar, Hisahu, Elakar, Duty Moji, the Ag Joge, E Hamla Chalanohoi. Bondu Ghari, AK 47 rifle, shotgun, grenade shaho, Bibino, Bishforo, Babahar Kore. E Hotona, Hamla Kari, the Ag Jono, Maragatse. E Chara Dujon Kripta Korece, Polish. Unisho Chua. পাকিস্তানে আহমদিয়া সম্প্রদায়কে অমুসলিম বলে ঘোষণা করা হয় এর আগেই দেশটির উগ্রপন্থী সুন্নিরা তাদের উপর এমন হামলা চালিয়েছে পাকিস্তানের সাংস্কৃতিক রাজধানী লাহোর ভাসছে রক্তের বন্যায় শুক্রবার দুপুরে আহমদিয়া সম্প্রদায়ের মুসল্লিরা জুম্মার নামাজ আদায় করতে যান শহরের মডেল টাউন ও গাড়িশাহু এলাকার দুটি মসজিদে নামাজ শুরু হয় স্থানীয় সময় দুপুর 1টায় আর তার পরপরই মুহুরমুহ গর্জে ওঠে ঘাতকদের অত্যাধুনিক অস্ত্র শান্তির ঘর মসজিদ পরিণত হয় লাশের মর্গে 
ওদের কাছে অনেক অস্ত্র ছিল ছিল গ্রেনেড আমি একটা গ্রেনেড ফাটার শব্দ পাই আর তারপর শুরু হয় গুলি বর্ষণ আমরা হতভম্ব হয়ে গিয়েছিলাম পুলিশ বলছে মডেল টাউন মসজিদে মোট চারজন হামলা চালায় আর গাড়ি শাহুর মসজিদে হামলাকারী ছিল কমপক্ষে তিনজন প্রত্যক্ষদর্শীরা বলছে পূর্ব পরিকল্পনা অনুযায়ী এক হামলাকারী মডেল টাউন মসজিদের মিনারে অবস্থান নেয় পরিস্থিতি নিয়ন্ত্রণে আনার সময় সেখান থেকে তার ছোড়া গুলিতে আহত হয় অন্তত নয় নিরাপত্তারক্ষী প্রায় দুই ঘন্টা বন্দুক যুদ্ধের পর মডেল টাউন এলাকার মসজিদটির নিয়ন্ত্রণ নিতে সক্ষম হয় পুলিশ এ সময় এক সন্ত্রাসী নিহত হয় আটক করা হয় আরও দুইজনকে তবে গাড়ি শাহু এলাকার মসজিদটির গঠন দুর্গের মতো হওয়ায় এটি নিয়ন্ত্রণে নিতে বেশ বেগ পেতে হয় পুলিশের সেখানে বেশ কিছু মুসল্লিকে জিম্মি হিসেবেও আটকে রাখে হামলাকারীরা শেষ পর্যন্ত হামলাকারী তিনজনের আত্মঘাতী বিস্ফোরণের মধ্য দিয়ে শেষ হয় এই জঙ্গি হামলার তবে কর্তৃপক্ষ জানিয়েছে কমপক্ষে দুইজন সন্ত্রাসী পালিয়ে গেছে এদের খোঁজে তল্লাশি চলছে এখন পর্যন্ত কোনো জঙ্গি দল এ ঘটনার দায়িত্ব স্বীকার না করলেও পুলিশ বলছে হামলার ধরনটি তালেবানদের মতো পাকিস্তান সরকার আহমেদিয়া সম্প্রদায়কে উনিশশো তিয়াত্তর সালে অমুসলিম আখ্যা দেয় আর উনিশশো সালে মুসলিম হিসাবে পরিচয় দেবার ওপর নিষেধাজ্ঞা আরোপ করে এরপর থেকেই সুন্নিপন্থী বিভিন্ন জঙ্গি সংগঠনের নিয়মিত হামলার শিকার হতে হয় তাদের বিশেষ করে তালেবান ও আল কায়দা সমর্থিত সন্ত্রাসী দলগুলো শুধু দুই হাজার দশেই হত্যা করেছে এই সম্প্রদায়ের কমপক্ষে দুইশো সদস্যকে এর মধ্যে গত মার্চে লাহোরে আহমাদিয়া অধ্যুষিত এলাকায় এক বোমা বিস্ফোরণে মারা যায় ষাট জন এ হামলায় নিন্দার ঝড় বইছে পাকিস্তান সহ পুরো বিশ্ব জুড়ে আমরা এই হামলার তীব্র নিন্দা জানাচ্ছি হামলাকারীদের যত কঠিন শাস্তি দেই না কেন তা কখনোই এই হামলায় হতাহতদের কাছে যথেষ্ট হবে না এটা এমনই বর্বরোচিত একটি ঘটনা ওয়াহেদুর রহমান এনটিভি ইন্টারন্যাশনাল ডেস্ক Gunmen have attacked two mosques in the Pakistani city of Lahore, killing more than 80 people. The attacks during Friday prayers targeted the minority Muslim Ahmadi sect. Some worshippers were taken hostage, but police officials said they've now regained control of both mosques. Ali Makbul reports from Islamabad. These were simultaneous attacks on two mosques at a time when they were packed. Hundreds of people were attending Friday prayers. So many of them killed indiscriminately. So many others having to witness the most horrific scenes. Two young men came down here. They entered the mosque, firing gunshots. Everyone hid wherever he could find a place to hide. One attacker fired gunshots from the window of the basement. No police turned up. We broke the door down and got out. He didn't follow us, but he blew himself up. Exchanges of fire continued between police and gunmen for hours. Some of the militants were seen taking up positions in the mosque's minarets. Both buildings attacked were places of worship for followers of a minority sect of Islam, the Ahmadis. Many hardliners here consider Ahmadis non-Muslims. They've been targeted by militants in the past, but not on this scale. The community's long complained the authorities haven't taken seriously the threats that they and other minorities in Pakistan face. It is just one of the complex, interlinked issues connected with Islamist militancy that the country's dealing with. On the streets of Lahore, chaos and terror. Security forces moving in after brazen attacks in broad daylight on worshippers gathered for Friday prayers. The targets were members of a minority sect, the Ahmadis. They were sprayed with bullets as they prayed. Police commandos battled with attackers armed with assault rifles, explosives and hand grenades. Those that could ran for their lives. This gunman reached the top of a minaret, firing on those below. Extraordinary scenes, even for a city that's getting used to bloodshed and fear. And for this woman, the trauma of loved ones trapped inside a mosque under siege. 
In hospital, we met one of the survivors, Rashid. He was hit by three bullets and witnessed the killing of a young boy who just wanted to give his father some water. The son was uh, offering him water and while he was drinking water, these two people came in and they shot him point blank. I can't forget that. <laughs> it was very, very... I, was th I thought they would spare them, but they did not spare them. Inside the mosques, it seems that no one was spared, killed for their faith in a country already awash with blood. All around us here is the evidence of the attack. We've been told one suicide bomber came to this position before blowing himself up. And you can see how powerful his explosive device was. Over here, the metal has been mangled and the wall has been pockmarked by the ball bearings inside that explosive vest. The aim was to cause the maximum possible devastation, and that was the result. Tonight, outside, there are shoes that will never be reclaimed, and many here are wondering who the militants will come for next. Orla Guerin, BBC News, Lahore. Come, lo satio, afate zulmato jor, tal jayegi. Ye duayi katha mojza ke asa, sahiro ke mukabil bana. ये तो आई कथा मोजजा के आसा साहिरों के मुकाबिल बना दहा आज भी देखना मर्द हक की दुआ शहर की नागनो को निगल जाएगी दो घड़ी सब्र से काम लो साथियों दो घड़ी सब्र से नाजिर आला एंड अमीर मुकामी मिर्जा खुर्शीद अहमद साहेब लेट द फ्यूनल प्रेयर्स एंड आफ्टर द बरियल्स ही लेट द साइलेंट प्रेयर्स At this time, Janaza prayers for 40 martyrs have been offered and 38 have been buried. By the grace of Allah, all the Ahmadis are united. They have unshakable faith in Jamaat Ahmadiyya and are facing the atrocities bravely. They are ready to sacrifice their life on the command of their Imam, Hazrat Khalifatul Masih. I'd like to request Mr. Abbas Faiz for his comments and uh, I'd like to know what they are doing, Amnesty International is doing for this, you know, Ahmadiyya issue, particularly in Pakistan. It is a very serious issue. Um, it is the attack against the Ahmadis anywhere in the world, whether it is in uh, Pakistan or in Bangladesh or in Indonesia. It is a violation of human rights. And of course, Amnesty International has been at the forefront of uh, uh, the uh, uh, campaign to um, to raise awareness about this, the issue and to also um, uh, to condemn these attacks. And I think my friend uh, Mr. Mujibur Rahman uh, is is uh, very well aware of the work that Amnesty International has done on this particular issue in Pakistan. Uh, my very good friends who are here um, will uh, witness the work that we did. I think it was a very a good tribute to the community itself, themselves, and to also international organizations, and of course to the leading human rights defender in Bangladesh, uh, Mr. Sharyar Kabir, to really come together in uh, uh, it was 2000 and 
2003, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah 2003 and 2004, mm -hmm. when we all actually joined hands and, uh, and started to raise our voices against the attacks uh, on uh, the members of the Ahmadiyya community in Bangladesh. So we are well aware of that. I mean, there is just no way that anyone can actually condone these attacks. And it is all, you know, an issue that has to be um, raised. Uh, and, uh, and, and Amnesty International has continued to raise the issue. I know that we have raised the issue in, on, on, uh, in the situation in Pakistan, in Bangladesh, in Indonesia as well, although the situation is not probably as bad. But, uh, but the issue has been raised. And, uh, and I'm very pleased to say that you know, there is a community of international support for this particular issue. So um, you are not alone. The international community is aware of the issue. And, and they are taking action as much as they can. Um, and, uh, and of course, you know, I can't forget the um, uh, reading the newspaper report in London to hear that a group of people, um, including our very good friend Sharia Kabir, went to one of the mosques in Bangladesh and actually created a human chain again, uh, around that mosque. And that was really a symbolic gesture that meant so much for all of us as human rights defenders, uh, not only in Bangladesh, but everywhere in the world. And I think you know, that is really a source of encouragement that there are people in this country, and there aren't just a few of them, there are quite a lot of people, a lot of human rights defenders, a huge community of really intellectuals, writers, journalists, uh, medical professionals, uh, and also ordinary people who are you know, saying, no, we don't want this level of violence and we don't want to tolerate it. We don't want to accept it. So that is a source of encouragement to all of us. Thank you. Thank you, Abbas. Uh, I'd like to request our friend, uh, Attorney William Sloan. Do you like to comment a few words? My grandfather, before he came to North America, uh, had his nose broken by a brick in a pogrom in uh, what is known today as Belarus. His name wasn't Sloan, it was Slobodsky, Benjamin Slobodsky. Um, today it's one, yesterday it was another one, tomorrow it's a different one. Sometimes it's one group attacking this group, sometimes it's the other group attacking this one. And it's not limited to to Sunni Muslims or Shiite Muslims. It's not limited to Muslims. Uh, it's Shiv Sena in, in India. It's uh, Christians attacking Jews uh, in the pogroms in the old days. It's, it's Jews attacking uh, Palestinians and doing the same kind of thing in the mosque. Uh, it's uh, it, it's repeated all over the world, but I think that as as we try to fight this scourge to to humanity, we have to understand that the problem doesn't lie with a religion. It's it's a perversion of religion. So now I'd like to request. Uh the chair of this informal session, Mr. P. S. Sangma, to say a few words and conclude the session. Mr. Sangma. Friends, I think we have had enough uh, for this evening also. So I would like to thank everybody here for having uh, come, uh, particularly uh, uh, friend Majibur Rahman has given us a lot of ideas what is happening in Pakistan. Other two friends from uh, had, had given us a lot of ideas. So I thank uh, uh, Sahir Kabir, all, all those uh, who have come here. Thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the evening and the night, and have a good time and good food. Thank you. Good night. Thank you.